you're doing with two fingers or even with ten fingers? No, no, ten fingers. Ten fingers? Oh, yeah. Same fingers as Tim. Okay, so you're quite fast. How many minutes for one page? Uh, depends what the page is about. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I know, I mean, I can do a uh, hundred words a minute, so 80 words a minute. I'm very fast. Great. The problem is that I can type faster than I think. So that, that could be a problem. What does it mean for your publisher? Uh, it means I wrote 300,000 words last year. And I'm on track to write another 300,000 this year. And that is a lot of words. That is a big book. Um, inheritance in English is about 300,000 words. And now we've got this volume of short stories in comparison. Also, this man has a lot of words about so, two, three short stories about Allegasia, but not about Aragon in particular. Well, we have a framing device with Aragon and Sephira that presents the short stories, but each idea is separate, and I really enjoyed the challenge of writing stories that had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and that didn't take ten years and a thousand, thousand pages to, to actually finish. Also es hat dem Schuh schon Spaß gemacht, denn in zehn Jahren hat es diesmal nicht gebraucht, um diese Geschichten zu schreiben. And uh, you are locating them as a sequel or prequel, or where do you locate them? Both. 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 The, the book is set one year after the events of Inheritance, but uh, the stories themselves take place at different times. Ein Jahr nach den Geschehnissen aus den vier Bänden, aber auch an verschiedenen Orten und dann wiederum an dann auch verschiedenen Zeiten. So, let's find out more about the book. Let's find out more about the first story, about the story called Fork, about Die Gabel in Deutsch. Well, the funny thing is, is uh, this story, I got the idea for this story about a year and a half ago, and it was on Twitter. It was very late at night, like one in the morning, and some reader tweeted me, for all I know it was one of you, so I'm going to blame this on you, and someone tweeted me and said, hey Christopher, can you tell me what Murtag is doing? And I've had too much coffee, so I wrote back and said, Murtag, he's busy fighting off a group of enemies using a magic fork named Mr. Stabby. Also Auslöser war eine kleine Twitter-Auseinandersetzung und äh, da wurde er gefragt, ja, was macht eigentlich Murtag? Naja, der bekämpft gerade eine ganze Gruppe von Gegnern mit einer zauberhaften oder verzauberten Gabel. And the horrible thing is, is I couldn't stop thinking about that idea and I wanted to know if I could write a serious story about a magic fork named Mr. Stabby. Und dann war für ihn die literarische Herausforderung, kann er eine ernsthafte Geschichte schreiben über eine verzauberte Gabel mit dem Namen Stabby, habt ihr schon gehört, in der deutschen Übersetzung Herr Stich. Whether or not I succeeded, I leave it up to you to decide. Das können wir gleich nochmal fragen. Er fragt ja, äh, naja, hat's ihm, äh, ist es ihm gelungen oder nicht? Äh, vielleicht mal beim Anzeichen, wem gefiel die Gabelgeschichte, der sie schon gelesen hat, die sie schon gelesen haben? Okay. You know, as I was sitting here, I was thinking about how nice it was that the last time we did an event together, there was blood involved. Yeah, and it was it. This was in Berlin. I wasn't quite sure if you want to tell. But... <laughs> okay, yeah, you tell the story. Yeah, go on. Yeah. This was in Berlin, and it was a uh, this old theater, and we were doing an event on stage just like this. And before speaking, I came from backstage and I climbed up this ladder. And I banged my shin on the steps of the ladder so badly that the whole front of my jeans were soaked in blood. Also, das war eine Geschichte in Berlin, wer sich in Berlin ein bisschen auskennt, dort im äh, Kino in Babylon in Berlin Mitte war das. Und äh, dort gab es eine sehr steile Treppe im Vergleich zu hier. Und er ist halt natürlich ja, mit Energie hochgekommen, hat sich das Schienbein geschnitten und äh, man konnte einfach zusehen, wie seine Hose sich immer mehr verfärbte. Aber er hat sehr tapfer durchgehalten. You were quite brave, actually. You did the whole show with bleeding legs. We did the whole show and then signed books for everyone. But I'm always happy. A good event is an event where there's no bloodshed. <laughs> but no accidents today. No accidents today, yet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We have a Ja, Blut ist natürlich so ein Thema, da können wir uns nachher vielleicht auch noch mal drüber unterhalten. Wir reden aber jetzt erst einmal über die zweite Geschichte. Let's talk about the second story in the book. Ah. It's about the witch. Yes. And it's not just, well, one kind of witch, it's the witch. 
Well, as many of you will know, I based the character of Angela the Herbalist, the witch, off of my sister, Angela. And fortunately, she has a very good sense of humor about this, or else I wouldn't be sitting here right now. <laughs> ja, wie ihr sicherlich mitbekommen habt, dass äh, diese Figur, die Kräuterhexe, natürlich auch eine lebendige, ja sozusagen Patin hat, nämlich seine Schwester Angela. Aber sie hat Gott sei Dank einen ganz guten Humor und nimmt das Ganze doch sehr gelassen. By the way, where is she today? Wo ist sie heute? Actually, my sister would have been here today with this presentation, but she got delayed with bad weather in Montana. But she wanted me to tell you that the real reason she was delayed uh, was by a herd of aggravated alpacas. Her words. Your, your, your own alpacas? No. No, no, the neighbors. Of the neighbors. Ah, okay. That's right. Also, uh, sie sollte eigentlich auch dabei sein. Es hat nicht funktioniert uh, wegen des Wetters, aber eigentlicher Grund ist natürlich, uh, dass die Alpakas des Nachbarn da ein Problem uh, gemacht haben. Und ja, deswegen ist sie also verhindert. But still, when you're writing, when you're planning your stories, she's quite important for you. Very much. Uh, I've always collaborated with my sister behind the scenes. She's one of my first readers, one of my first editors. Uh, but this is the first time we've collaborated openly. And it was my sister's idea. She came to me and said she had an idea for this story. And I didn't even ask what it was. I just said, go write it. And she did. And I think it turned out beautifully. Sie hat immer schon sehr viel zu sagen gehabt bei den ganzen Geschichten rund um Aragorn, aber diesmal haben sie wirklich zusammengearbeitet, eine Arbeitsteilung, wie man das vielleicht dann mit zwei Autoren sich vorstellen kann, denn sie hat diesmal auch Geschichten selber hineingeschrieben und die dann in diesem gemeinsamen Buch auch veröffentlicht wurden. So, as a very first time, actually. Yeah, and, and what she did is quite difficult because she had to work within someone else's world, with someone else's character, and I would have difficulty doing that, and I think she pulled it off beautifully. Ja, das muss man sich vorstellen. Sie musste sich ja in seine erfüllte Welt hineinversetzen. Und der Film ist, sie hat das großartig gemacht. So, and I'm hoping that you'll get to see more of her fiction in the near future. We'll see. Okay, uh, here's some ankündigung, but vielleicht wird dann auch in Zukunft von ihr das eine oder andere noch zu lesen sein. Um, let's just talk about this process. Um, as Angela, uh, the herb which in the, the story, your sister brought you all the sheets with her. Yeah. The story or how did it work? She did. She brought me the, the chapter that's written from the point of view of her character. And I read it and then I had a few suggestions based off my knowledge of the world. And we did a few tweaks and then I wrote the chapters that bracket the story from Aragon's point of view. And uh, it was difficult for me to let go and let someone else write in my world. but. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I, something I hope to do with her again at some point. So, für die unmöglichen Wege und äh, die das Buch vor sich haben, also können wir es auch hier nochmal hier für die Kamera vielleicht kurz aufbereiten. Jeder Geschichte ist ein ganzseitiges Bild vorangestellt, von Christopher gezeichnet. So, Christopher, tell us about your sketches, pictures in the book. Well, I've always enjoyed art, and I did all of the interior art for the Inheritance Cycle over the years. And with this book, I wanted to do some extra pieces. So there are uh, four interior illustrations, a map, and then three images, one for each story. And I think the one I enjoyed doing the most was the third one, uh, the one for the Worm of Kokaris. Also, er hat alle Geschichten etwas vorangestellt und auch eine Karte. Und am liebsten mag er. Ah, I call it, you know, we call it the Esel's War Roses. Oh, that's funny. In the German translation, you can find it, yeah? Ah, here we are. We call it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, why do you like this most? Uh, because it was very hard to make, to draw. And uh, it was so hard that I had to make a clay sculpture for the horde, just so that I could get the curve and the shape correctly. And uh, when I was working on it, a friend of mine called me up and said, So Christopher, what are you doing? And I said, I'm making a sculpture. And she said, oh, of a flower or a bird. And I said, no, of an Urkel horn. 
Also wir fragen von uns, ja, was machst du denn da schon? Ist das eine Vase oder wird das vielleicht was Vogelartiges? Nein, es wird ein Urgalor. <lacht> ja, this is, a, well, this is the one, the Urgal Horn by... Can we talk about it or is it spoiling? It's from the third yeah. story. Yeah. Interesting enough, this is the biggest story of yes. the three in uh, the book. And this is my favorite story for me personally. Uh, it, it actually came about because my sister and I watched a big blockbuster Hollywood movie and it wasn't very good. Uh, and no, this wasn't Aragon. <laughs> I mean, it couldn't be. They, they never made it into a film, right? Okay, well, we could talk about this as well. Thank you very much. The inspiration for this little and story, also here in this book, was a, yeah, say it, a failure film. But uh, the thing is, is the, the movie we saw, it was, it wasn't perfect. And I don't know about you, but I find things that are imperfect to be much more inspiring than things that are perfect. Because something that's perfect, a perfect movie, a perfect book, it's like this polished gem that hangs in front of you and you admire its beauty. But there's no way to figure out how to improve it or even how it was made. But something that's imperfect, you know it's wrong. And often you know why it's wrong. And that gives you ideas of how to fix it. Ja, also er findet aber dann doch, dass natürlich das nicht perfekte viel inspirierender sein kann. Gerade wenn man Fehler sieht, können das auch wieder Quellen für neue Ideen sein, für Anknüpfungspunkte. Bei einer perfekten Sache, da steht es nur einfach nur davor, ja, du kannst dieses Perfekte anschauen, aber es ist eben vollkommen. Was soll man da noch machen? Was soll man da noch sagen? Kann man da noch weitergehen? And in this case, the movie gave me an idea for writing a story about something I had never written about before. A dragon. Okay, in dem Fall hat er also diesen erfolglosen Film als Vorlage genommen, um über etwas zu schreiben, was er noch nie geschrieben hat. Genau, ich habe es mitbekommen. Um, Noch einen Tag. By the way, first uh, I thought uh, why you were, um, uh, mentioned it in your um, epilogue that uh, it was about the movie Dune by Alan Smithy, but it isn't. No, it's not. Vielleicht kennt ihr den auch. Ich dachte erst, es wäre irgendwie gewesen Anlehnung an Dune. Ja, da ging es nicht um Drachen im engeren Sinne, also nicht sozusagen diese Würmer, sondern eben diese Erdwürmer. Äh, das war es eben überhaupt nicht. Aber er sprach von diesem erfolglosen Film und alle, die es wissen, Dune war eben zu der Zeit auch eher als B-Movie dann wohl gesehen. Und Alan Spissy, der hat sich dann uh, also auch davon distanziert. But the funny thing is, is that uh, I wanted to write about a different kind of dragon. A dragon that was more like a mythological creature, you know, a force of nature. A dragon that was very large, very angry, and very hungry. And that's actually why I'm glad dragons don't actually exist. Because compared with dragons, humans are small, crunchy, and good with ketchup. <laughs> Also in dem Fall ist es ein eher als mythologischer Drachen, der äh, ja, im Grunde genommen ja, ihr habt es mitbekommen, ein ganz anderer Typ ist. Aber ich würde das ganz gerne nochmal irgendwie fragen wollen. Es ist auch so für die Ordels, es ist, let's say, ein kind of ancient Myth, die er produziert hat. Ja? Also er hat ja eigentlich auch so eine Art Sage, eine Legende für die Ordels jetzt hier produziert. Ist es das gewesen? Was es deine Idee, to give some another mythic background. Yes, and I, to, to, I, it, for me it was a challenge, as I said earlier, to write a complete story in a limited number of pages and to make it feel like an old legend, an old fairy tale. And that was my goal, and I think I got somewhere close to the goal. But uh, and it was also fun to explore the race of the Urgals in a way that I haven't in the rest of the books. Also das war tatsächlich für ihn auch eine sehr schöne Erfahrung, diese Geschichte, die Frühgeschichte, die Vorgeschichte sozusagen, dieses Stamms der Urwalds zu entwickeln. Zu 